There are several factors that affect the rate of a reaction, how fast it's going to go. One of them is the order of the reaction. Now the order of a reaction is an exponent in the rate law that shows how the rate is dependent on the concentration of a particular uh, component. In a lot of cases, the rate of a reaction is directly proportional to the concentration of one of the components. In that case, we would say the reaction is first order with respect to that component. In some cases, the reaction is dependent on the square of the concentration of the component, in which case we would represent that as a second order reaction. And in some cases, the rate does not depend on the concentration of the reactant at all, in which case we would say it's zero order because anything raised to the zero is one, and we would have a constant rate from our rate laws. Today I'm going to show you one way to determine the order of a reaction with respect to a component. And I'm going to be using this compound, which is dissolved in water. It is a compound called crystal violet. Crystal violet has been known about for a really long time, and it is what's known as a triaryl methane dye. And uh, what that really means is that there's a lot of double bonds in there that are working together to give it this really bright, intense purple color. Crystal violet is good for a lot of things, such as dyeing fabrics, dyeing papers, making blue or black inks for your ballpoint pen or your inkjet printer. Uh, and it is also an acid-base indicator. At a pH of one or below, it's a bright yellow color, but anything above a pH two, we have this bright purple color. The reaction I'm showing you today is the reaction of crystal violet with another chemical, uh, sodium hydroxide. And the business end of the sodium hydroxide is the hydroxide ion, which will go into the solution with the crystal violet and when it reacts and attaches to the crystal violet molecule, the crystal violet molecule will stop being purple and it will move toward being colorless. And since the intensity of the color of a solution is directly proportional to its concentration, we're going to use its absorbance to monitor this reaction over time and see how the concentration affects the rate. I'm going to monitor the concentration of the crystal violet over the course of the reaction. Now, if the reaction is zero order, then the rate will be constant and the crystal violet will just continue to drop in concentration and what it'll get is the concentration versus time graph as being a straight line. However, if the reaction is first order, meaning it, the rate is dependent on how much crystal violet is remaining at any given time, then a different plot was, will give me a straight line and that will be the natural log of crystal violet versus time. However, if the reaction is second order, dependent on the square of the concentration of crystal violet remaining at any given time, then um, my plot of inverse crystal violet versus time will give me a straight line. Let's get a few business items out of the way. First, the concentration of my crystal violet solution is 2.5 times 10 to the minus fifth moles per liter. That's not a lot. There's not a lot of molecules in here, but you still get that really intense color. The concentration of my sodium hydroxide is 0.1 moles per liter which is vastly higher than the concentration of this. So the concentration, because this is such a high concentration relative to this, this concentration is gonna be essentially constant throughout the whole experiment. Next, the crystal violet has an absorption maximum at around 590 nanometers. And so on my candy colorimeter here, I'm going to be using a wavelength of 565, which is pretty close and will give us good results. And finally, since the rate of a reaction is extremely temperature dependent. I'm just going to note the temperature that I'm at today and I have 22.0 degrees Celsius. Now to get this party started I have measured out 10 milliliters each of, no I haven't actually, 10 milliliters each of the crystal violet and the sodium hydroxide solutions and I'm going to mix them together in this little handy beaker here. Give that a little stir make sure all the molecules are getting to know each other really well. And then after a short amount of time, as it settles into the reaction, I'm going to transfer it over into my cuvette. Set that aside. I wanna make sure to get all my fingerprints off the cuvette before I put it in. And then we'll go ahead and put it in. And we can then begin monitoring the reaction.
Okay, so the concentration versus time data that we're seeing right here is not linear, uh, which indicates that it is not a zero order reaction. And I wanna manipulate this graph to see what order it actually is. So we'll go to table, new calculated column. All right, and the first one I see here is the inverse of the absorbance, and so we'll hit okay. And that is the one over concentration versus time graph, and that is also clearly not linear. So that indicates that it is not a second order reaction. So let's do that one more time. And we will do the natural log when I find it, there it is, of the absorbance, which is proportional to the concentration. And look at that. That is my natural log graph of concentration versus time, and it is quite linear. Um, not perfect, but still pretty good. So let's make sure we get a little line on there. Okay. All right, so I can see by this that it is pretty linear. Again, not perfect, but of course it's lab data, so you have to expect a little bit of inaccuracy. Um, but what I do have here <clears throat> is the equation for the line over here. And it shows here that my slope of that line, of my best fit line, is negative 0.0044208. Um, and that slope is negative, and it's also equal to the negative rate constant. So by doing this, I now have found out that it is first order, and I now have my rate constant. So because the graph of the natural log of the crystal violet concentration versus time gave us a straight line, we know that this reaction is first order with respect to crystal violet. We also know that since the slope of the line turned out to be 0.0044, uh, that gives me the rate constant for this reaction at this temperature. If you've been paying attention this long, and I do hope that you have, you may have been wondering about the OH and be thinking, what order of reaction is the OH? What is this little M up here? Well, the answer is, for this experiment, I did not figure out what M is. And it should be noted that I found a rate constant, 0.0044 seconds to the negative one, and that actually is a pseudo rate constant. Now, what the heck is a pseudo rate constant? Well, I kept the concentration of OH very, very high so that as the crystal violet reacted, the OH essentially stayed constant. And so the concentration of OH, including its order, gets basically wrapped into the rate constant itself to form a new rate constant, a pseudo rate constant. It's the rate constant with respect to crystal violet, not necessarily the rate constant with respect to the entire reaction, including the OH. The new pseudo rate constant is equal to the actual rate constant times the concentration and order of the OH, which I guess at this point we don't know it. And that leads me to my pseudo rate constant being 0 0.0044, um, one over seconds. <clears throat> so there you have it. The reaction of crystal violet with sodium hydroxide is first order with respect to crystal violet. It also happens to be first order with respect to OH, but that would require a separate experiment. Have a great day.